All right, well, what we have here is a Borg Warner Mark II 4200 eight track player for a, for a car, a vehicle. And uh, I actually had this working just fine in my Jeep, but it was playing slow. So uh, I cracked it open, take a look, expecting uh, you know an old fairly withered belt and what I found was two rubber bands, elastic bands that someone had put in for the uh, belt. So no wonder it was playing slow. So I talked to the people at Ken's Electronics who's out of Kalamazoo and uh, what he suggested was you get a piece of 20 gauge wire stretch it around where the belt's supposed to go it, this is if you don't have one and then tell him how long the wire was and he sends you the uh, appropriate belt which apparently this one is so while I put this on here's some pictures of the uh, of the player in its complete form I'm just going to put it on right here. Should be fairly simple actually if you hang on a minute. There you go. And we'll see whether that works alright. So here's some pictures of it complete. So let's get this thing back together again. And uh I just ran this screwdriver over a uh, speaker magnet to magnetize it just to make it a little bit easier to do that with. Okie dokie. Now the other thing I'm going to do while I've got it open is attack it with some of this stuff it's called deoxit and I cannot tell you how fantastic this stuff is if you've got audio visual equipment or any kind of electronic equipment that uh, has sticky buttons you know sort of iffy contacts uh, crackly potentiometers anything like that this stuff don't have to be careful at all just spray it on everything and it just deoxidizes all, all the oxidization and all the crud off these little components and your uh, device will be happier for it Now I bought a tiny little bottle of this at Radio Shack for about uh, $17 and I went to the Guitar Center, which I think is a chain, and I got that big bottle for the same price. Whereas Radio Shack was like a little perfume bottom. It was a bottle, it was pathetic. So. You know what, I think before I put all that back together again, 
I'm gonna go try this in the car. So let's see what happens. All right, well, I was gonna go outside and uh, hook this up in my car, but um, here in Arkansas, it's been pretty hot. And then we've had some rain and the mosquitoes are ridiculous right now. So uh, I remembered watching a YouTube video about how somebody hooked up their car stereo from a PC power supply. It's actually really easy to do. You just take the uh, connector where it connects to the main board, attach the green and black wire together from out of here. As you can see, I've cut them. And that, that provides the, uh, the constant on. And then uh, you take one of the uh, regular, what, are they, what was it called, a Molex plug or something? Anyway, the yellow is the positive, and then the black is up to the ground, which is attached to the frame here. And it seems to work pretty well. I've got it hooked up to uh, just uh, my stereo speaker here. And we'll uh, see whether Ken's Electronics got the belt size right. Sounded good. Not quite sure what happened. Did we get to the end of the track? No, it chewed the tape as it always does with these wonderful eight tracks. But the main thing is the uh, the song sounded good, so I think they got the uh, the belt size right. So we will turn this off and put it back together. I suppose a quick little look at this thing. Um, couldn't find anything with a date on it. I've got to assume it's early to mid 70s. Um, Paul Warner I think is a pretty decent brand. Um, it's, it's not a radio, it's just a tape player. Not overloaded with features, tone, balance, volume. Um, some Hitachi components on it. Good opportunity to clean the heads very well. Lube everything up as I have done with the deoxit. So we'll put it back together and put it back in the Jeep. So just before we put it back into the into the Jeep, I wanted to show you uh, that it's all back together again. This is how it looks. This is the volume here. Tone control. And then this inner slider is uh, the balance and that's the, your, your track changer here I'd like to tell you that it's working and I did clean the insides very thoroughly and I can tell you that deoxid that you saw me do earlier has really really helped this there's no crackle when you turn the knobs and both channels are equally powerful. I mean they both sound great whereas before the left one was a little bit sort of sketchy. Got both the speakers plugged in now. This computer power supply is whining a bit so I don't I won't, I won't be long. Uh, mail tell us. I don't think so. Just to prove to you that uh, eight track tapes are a pain in the ass, but uh, if you're prepared to do a bit of work, you can you can uh, live with them. Here's my grease tape that you saw chewed up, quickly repaired. This is the 
tone. And then the balance. 